Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another episode. My name is Ethan and today, yes, we are going to be doing a painted makeover on this Empire dresser. Now my grandparents had picked this up at an auction. It was going to be a no sale. It was going to get tossed. Uh, they picked it up for $5 and had given it to us and you know wanted us to do something with it. So we are going to be doing a rustic farmhouse style makeover on this. Um, so if you want to see how this turns out, make sure you stick around. So let me just start off by saying this piece was in really rough shape. It was missing knobs, it was missing veneer, um, you know, it had a lot of damage to it. So we try to preserve the wood wherever we can. We try to preserve, you know, some of the originality where we can, but this piece was in really rough shape. So, um, you know, it, it needed a nice facelift and I know painting furniture is controversial at times, but like I said, we try to preserve it where we can, but we also need to get pieces done and out the door as well. Um, so for this one, we're gonna do as many repairs as we can do, and then we're gonna paint it with fusion mineral paint. So the first thing, as always, is we're gonna clean this piece up. You can use a TSP, or you can use, you know, different uh, degreasers. Um, you know, we usually use just Dawn dish soap and water. And this piece was filthy. I mean, it had dust and spider webs, and it seemed like it was sitting out in a barn for a while, so it definitely needed a good thorough cleaning. And this will help remove any um, kind of grease or grime as well that could, you know, cause your paint not to stick later on. And then I go back with just some plain water and kind of wipe the whole thing down again. Get any leftover dirt that's on there, but also, you know, wipe off some of that uh, soap. And we make sure we get every little nook and cranny and corner. And then we remove the hardware. Now our original intent was to reuse this hardware, but we had to see it with the color first just to kind of see if it was going to work. And next I'll use the heat gun to remove this little veneer piece on the front edge here. Uh, my plan is to leave the top wood if it's, you know, a nice wood after I sand it down. So I'm going to remove this veneer piece just to have that nice raw edge. And this veneer actually came off really easy with the heat gun, loosened it up nicely, and you just go along with the putty knife. And along with that is I'm just, you know, going to use a putty knife to kind of get at some of these spots that were already chipping. I'm trying to get the loose pieces off uh, so when I do fill it in with Bondo, it has a nice bond. Next, I just mix my Bondo together. And I'm going to start applying it to those spots with the missing veneer. And I'm not looking to make this perfect. Uh, you know, it's an old piece. It's going to have uh, some of that character showing through but I wanted to fill in some of these kind of larger spots where it would have been really noticeable. I kind of wanted to clean those lines up a little bit and make them look a little bit smoother when it was complete. And I'm also gonna soften these edges up here. Um, you know, we, we removed the veneer on this one piece, so there was a little bit difference in the transition, so I just need to smooth that out a little bit. And next, I'm just gonna use the orbital sander to sand this top down, get all the edges, and just work it down as far as I can to the natural wood. And I had debated, uh, one of the ideas was to poly over it and leave it more natural. The other idea was to uh, put some natural SFO over it. 
and you'll see a little bit later we ended up going with the natural SFO. It kind of gave it a nicer, richer look than the poly would have, and it also still provides it the protection. And then I use a piece of 220 grit sandpaper. Uh, you, you know, if you've been here for a while, you've seen me do this all the time. Uh, just make sure you go with the grains, kind of work out any um, additional roughness or any of the, you know, swirls that might have been left by the orbital sander. It just gives it a nice smooth uh, finish to the sanding process. And I wasn't originally planning to scuff sand this whole thing, but the finish on this was really kind of brittle. And, you know, as I was cleaning it, a lot of it was rubbing off and it was kind of powdering off just because it was, you know, such an old finish. It was really deteriorating. So I ended up doing a scuff sanding on the whole piece just to kind of get that loose dirt off and, you know, give it a nice base for the paint to stick to. And again, I'm not sanding down real far. I'm not sanding, you know, for the natural look or anything. You basically just want to sand far enough that you're getting a nice rough finish uh, for your paint to stick to. So it has better adhesion to the piece. And for this, I'm just using a 150 grit sanding disc. And some of these drawers did need a little bit more than a scuff sanding. They had kind of some different textures, some different um, elevations with the veneer it was kind of you know cracked up a little bit at certain spots so I just gave it a little bit of extra sanding a little bit more than a scuff sanding uh, just to kind of smooth them out a little bit but again I wasn't sanding so far that I was looking for the wood I just wanted to make sure I had a good base for my paint to lay on And now I am gonna prime this entire piece just because, you know, it was gonna be prone to bleeding. And with those different textures, with the Bondo color, the wood color, um, it did need a primer. Now we debated just using a regular brush on primer, but I had recently seen this tip on the channel Busted to Buff, and he uses this spray primer. Uh, that's brown obviously and I figured I'd give it a shot because you know we're gonna do some light distressing on this and you know with that brown color it looks a little more natural underneath rather than you know a different color white or anything like that so you know it works for uh, to prevent bleed but this will also help with the adhesion and it will look better uh, for the undercoat and I think it laid down nicer as well so it lays down nice and smooth it'll give us a nice smooth base for when we paint our top coat over it. So again, uh, you know, if you guys aren't already checking him out, go over and check out the channel Busted to Buff. Uh, he does some, you know, beautiful furniture makeovers and he's got some amazing tips and tricks finishing furniture. And this was our first time trying this primer method and I mean, it worked out great. So I'm happy we tried it. So today we're going to be using Fusion Raw Silk. This is one of my very favorite white paints to use because it's definitely a soft white, but it's also not yellow at all. So it's just a really pretty soft white. I find that it looks really good if you're going for more of a farmhouse or a vintage style. So this paint goes on really nicely. It's especially going on nice because we have this primer underneath, so it's going on real smooth. And I'm just going to get a first coat on everything here.
I have this new zebra brush, the one inch round. I picked that up when we were out at the shop where we can sign Lazy Dog Vintage. And I thought I would try this for inside this little detail here. It ended up that I really needed to use the flat brush, but it did work good in the corners. I just needed the flat brush to get behind there. You can see here that I didn't get behind that detail very well. I did go back later and fix that. So if that bothers you, just know that I did fix that later. It took a couple times of painting in there and then letting it dry and going back and painting again for it to completely cover. If you haven't worked with Fusion Mineral Paint, this paint goes on so smooth. It's like painting with butter. It's by far one of my very favorite paints to work with. If you want a nice smooth look, this is the paint to go for. It has a built-in self-leveler and so it really smooths out really nicely. All right, so this is what it looks like after the very first coat of Fusion Raw Silk. And as you can see, it is definitely gonna need a second coat. In fact, we went back and did a third touch-up coat. But this is what it looks like after the first coat. And with every coat you put on, you'll see that there's less and less of those streaks. So here you're gonna see me put on the second coat. I didn't record the third touch-up coat because it wasn't much to see, but like I said, I did go back and do a third coat in some areas where it just needed a little bit more paint. And that's pretty normal for working with a white. Um, white paints, you generally need more coats than with any other color. And if we would have started with a white primer, that would have also helped, but we had seen really good things about this primer and we knew that this particular piece was probably going to bleed really badly so we wanted to make sure that we stopped any bleed through.
So on the top drawer, since you know we were missing a couple knobs to begin with, we're gonna use these old glass door knobs. Now, I've used this method before uh, multiple times and it seems to work pretty well. So I use these uh, hanger bolts and I also use some of this JB Weld steel stick. So what you do is just you know take a piece off, you knead it together, uh, the two parts mix. You just kind of fill in the doorknob piece there with that steel stick and then you kind of work your bolt in so that the threaded part is sticking out that allows you to you know screw that into a piece of wood and you know, it'll, look, it'll look like any other knob and now sometimes you know with this method you kind of have to work it around a little bit you want to make sure you're getting a nice tight seal in there uh, you definitely don't want it loose And this steel stick tends to dry pretty quick as well. Uh, you hear me talk about that with the Bondo when you mix the two parts together, but this stuff is kind of the same way. It's an epoxy that when you mix the two together, it does dry pretty quick, so you wanna make quick work of it. And now we just take a razor blade and kind of go along the bottom where the paint meets the tape, just so I don't pull any dried paint off. I'm just kind of cutting that that plane between uh, the paint and the top just you know so I can pull a nice clean line with the tape and next I'm gonna give this piece a nice light distressing I'm not gonna go heavy I'm just kind of hitting some of the corners some of the edges I just want a little bit of kind of dimension coming out on it. I'm just gonna use this 220 grit sandpaper and just kind of go along and, you know, get some of those highlights and, and let it stand out a little bit. And now, since this is fusion mineral paint, it has a built-in top coat. You don't need to put any top coat over this. You can if you want to, if you want to build up some extra durability, but you know, fusion is kind of an all-in-one paint. For the most part, it has a built-in top coat. You don't really need to do anything after that. Again, just hitting some of the details here on the drawer. Uh, don't wanna go too hard. I just wanna make sure some of those details are kind of showing out and a little more noticeable. And for this top, I'm going to use a natural SFO. This is uh, Stain and Finishing Oil by Fusion. And this you can apply with a brush or a rag. Uh, you apply it on, let it sit for, you know, about 15 minutes, let it soak in, and then you're gonna come back with a dry rag and just rub off the excess. And you can apply multiple coats of this. It just builds up the durability and, you know, just follow the instructions uh, on the can, you know, wait your waiting periods and uh, you'll get a nice build up finish on it. And then I'm going to screw these doorknobs in on the top drawer here and see how they look. So I had mentioned earlier, uh, originally we we're going to see how the original white knobs looked and they just didn't stand out enough on the raw silk that we used here. So I ended up going through my stash and pulling out these older wooden knobs. Um, they have a little bit of paint on them, but I think it matched the piece well and kind of gave it a nice definition while, you know, kind of matching the whole piece. So I just had to pre-drill the hole and I kind of set the back in a little bit just so the screw head would be recessed a little bit.
And now after the uh, natural SFO dried on the top here, uh, this walnut piece just, it was a little too light up front for us and we wanted to darken it up a little bit to try to match the darker pieces of the wood. So I came back with a little bit of cappuccino SFO and blended it a little bit more. I just kind of went back over those lighter, more yellow spots and just applied it to those areas. And just as a reminder, here's what it looked like before. And here's what it looks like after. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, I know, you know, the painted look isn't always everybody's thing, but you know, I think this piece definitely needed it. And I think it really gave it a beautiful, new, fresh look that's gonna last for years. So if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. We'd love for you to stick around. We usually put out a video a week. And until our next one, check out some of our other videos. We'll see you guys next time.